We could just have a warm and cozy space full of classic literature. That is why Toni Morrison is so strong. Friend Ian Knight's way to unhaul books in a mini library. A incredibly info dumpy and just not that interesting. Hi, I'm Elena and welcome to another Vlogmas video. It is Vlogmas number... I don't know how many. I'll put it in here. <laughs> So today is not a one day vlog, but I thought I could do a vlog in which I read the classics for my November and December TBR. We could just have a warm and cozy space full of classic literature as a Vlogmas video. So on my November TBR there was First Love by Ivan Turgenev. I listened to this early in November. I decided to listen to this on audiobook. First Love is about a 16 year old boy who gets new neighbors. His new neighbors are a princess and her daughter. And her daughter is 20 years old and she's quite popular with men, including our 16-year-old hero. It starts out as a very typical 19th century love story. We have a young boy in love, a object of his love, and some obstacles towards him connecting with his love. But the second half of this novella was way more surprising. It had a little bit of scandal, a little bit of turns and twists, and I really quite enjoyed that. I didn't expect it to be more than just a simple love story, a simple 19th century love story, but it definitely was, and that really surprised me. The writing was just okay for me. It definitely didn't tip uh, Chekhov or Tolstoy. But I did think it served the purpose of the story very well, but I didn't think the writing was particularly noteworthy, it was just okay. And because of that I think it was a four star read for me. Even though the writing wasn't that uh, noteworthy to me, I did really like the way it was narrated because we have of course the narration of the 16 year old boy who falls in love, but we also have him when he is older in the beginning of the novella when he talks with his friends. Everyone is telling the story of their first love and a lot of people say well it's pretty boring, it was just my wife or um, one man says that the first time he fell in love he was six years old and he fell in love with his nurse and then our main character says well I have quite a story for you, here it is and then we have the novella of about 100 pages. So yes this is definitely a Russian classic that feels very accessible so if you want to start reading Russian classics then I think this is a good place to start. I started with some short stories by Anton Chekhov which I would also recommend and then I read Anna Kvenna which I did really like but it's not really a beginner's Russian classic even though it's not that difficult. It's an incredible chunky book. So that was the first classic we're going to discuss. The second one I haven't read yet and that is Sula by Toni Morrison. I was planning on reading this physically but I did just find an audiobook where Toni Morrison narrates the book herself so I think I'm going to listen to that and... <laughs> house today for lunch and the mini library is looking a little bit empty so I got a few books to fill it up hopefully maybe I can find the book someone else put in there that I want to read but this one is one we got a few months ago I think it's like a bit of a light comedy about travelers adventurers not really my kind of thing I have this short story collection that I did read most of but I bought it a few years back and I've just read most of it and I'm not going to reread it so this one's going in there as well. Um, a World War II story, I think this is YA Between the Shades of Grey and uh, also something I got but I don't think I'll read. And one that I read a few years ago is a bit of a bigger book, Swing Time by Zadie Smith. I did like this I think, it's a Dutch translation and I know I won't reread it in the translation. If I'll ever read it again I'll just read the original. So those are going in a mini library, hopefully someone will find them and like them. Um, the mini library is going pretty well, I think. Um, it's especially a place where people get books, not a lot of people leave books, which is totally fine by me because it feels like a very friendly and nice way to unhaul books in a mini library, at least to unhaul books that I think other people enjoy. So 
it kind of prevents me from hoarding with books, which is a really good thing. So yeah, it's kind of working out for me well, the mini library. And if I don't forget, I'll show you the books that are in there right now. <laughs> I have got to talk to you about some books because I have just been reading and not updating anything for the vlog. I have been making um, secret TBR videos but haven't really done the rest of this vlog. I do have some more festive things but I am too tall to fit in the screen with all of this. Let's talk about the first book I finished. I think I showed you a time lapse of how beautiful this book is and that is The Beauty and the Beast. This is the original text from 1740 which was a French text and I think it was like a century later yes 1858 when it was translated into English it definitely feels like a little bit of old English I don't know a lot about that but it did feel a little bit Shakespearean in part and this is such a rich fairy tale it is quite different from Disney adaptation which I don't see this often but I think Disney did a great job because there are things in this book that are weird and very chaotic and very all over the place and doesn't make a lot of sense. I think Disney took the best parts of this book and adapted it into something a bit more comprehensible. They do of course with a lot of books and this is one of the few of which I think Disney did a better job than the original. I think the story is quite chaotic. I think um, you have different chapters and they don't all feel like they're supposed to fit. In the beginning we get a story that looks a lot like Disney adaptation but then it goes on a bit of a different route and it goes a little bit more into the history of why the beast is a beast and not a prince. The way that Belle falls in love with him is not as admirable as in the Disney adaptations but maybe a little bit more realistic and she's a little bit more portrayed as I think someone who does have the qualities that she does in the film as well but also someone who is way more naive and not as all as clever which is something that we identify Belle with right that she is really clever and that is not really something that is in this book a lot in the original story and there is a big chapter as well about how the beast was cursed and I didn't I didn't love that chapter because it felt like incredibly info dumpy and just not that interesting but I did really enjoy reading this I did really have a good time because I really like the story of Beauty and the Beast I know that it has some elements that can be a bit questionable I just really like the vibe that all the adaptations have and I do really like knowing the original story now and just reading it with such a beautiful font and such beautiful illustrations was honestly a joy I did decide to only time lapse the beginning because if you have this book and I show you the entire time lapse then it's a bit of a spoiler and I will take a lot from your reading experience and I don't want to do that. So if you want to read the story of the Beauty and the Beast and you can get your hands on an edition like this then I would definitely recommend reading it like this because it added so much to my reading experience to read it in such a beautiful format. So my neighbors have been doing constructions for days now which you know needs to happen of course I don't blame them but it means that I haven't been able to really film. So I'm sorry if you hear any noise, but I had to do it at some point and I don't think they're anywhere near done yet, so. I said this was a classics vlog and the author is an author I would 
classify as a classics writer author. Oh, my hair is really weird. I only see it right now. But this book was actually written in 2018. I think it was one of Tony Morrison's last works. I gave this five stars and I was so impressed by it. It did really remind me of Beloved in a way that it was written. Follow a whole cast of characters. And basically we have the Varg family, Jacob Varg, who is a Dutch trader who goes to the United States. His wife is also, I think his wife is from Britain also travels to the United States and they get a house there, a farm. And of course they need people to work on the farm. And we have Lina, who is a Native American woman who they hire. Florence, of course, who is a young slave girl. And there is another girl called Soro who seems a little bit vague. And what I really loved about this book is that you don't get a chronological story of what happens in that household. You don't get a very simple, easygoing historical fiction. You get the histories of the entire cast of characters. And I think that is why Toni Morrison is so strong because she decides to tell everyone's history and everyone gets around the same amount of time to tell their history. She was so genius doing that because I think if you have the type of household I'm just describing then usually you get a lot of the perspective from the husband and the wife, the Farks, and the narratives of the servants is usually kind of ignored and in Morris's writing that's as far as I have read now, never the case. Everyone gets their own history, everyone gets their own story and I really enjoy that. Um, the writing isn't it's a bit experimental as well because she really writes in the voice of the characters. So for example, we have Mrs. Farg who has a very different voice than Florence does. I kind of like that. I can really get on board very easily with that kind of writing. If you want a comparison, the way The Color Purple by Alice Walker was written is also in the voice of the character and that is kind of what Toni Morrison does as well. So that is kind of how she handles it. But in the same way as in Beloved where all the characters get their own history, I just... I love that so much. I thought it was just genius how well, how balanced Toni Morris was able to write about a quite a big cast of characters in 167 pages. Another Toni Morrison down and one that I really really like. Didn't plan to read this early on in my Toni Morrison journey. But I love that I did. Another book I started for the Dutch Classic Book Club is Short Stories by Shirley Jackson. I've been listening to this on audiobook while doing some chores, while cooking, so I'm not that far in. I'm around here and I just finished a story that was funny. I did not expect that these stories would be funny. I have read novels by Julie Jackson. I have read We've Always Lived in a Castle and I've read Haunting of Hill House. And those are quite ghostly, quite, I wouldn't want to say horror, but they do have horror elements. For so far, these short stories, they're more eerie. They feel more like there is this danger or there is people who are very often lying, people who are twisting the truth for a bit, people who are pretending to be someone they're not. That's a big theme in these stories. Nothing gruesome or horror-like has happened just yet. And I just read a story, um, a girl who works at Macy's and she behaves all wrong. And it's hilarious. It was really very funny and I didn't expect that. And again, it's the whole thing about people's behavior being different than is acceptable or is predictable. Even though I wouldn't call that horror or thriller like it's still it's incredibly eerie and you feel like there could be more going on than you think and these short stories are divided into sections and i've just read the first section and the first section is a lot about the things i just discussed but i think the other stories may be a little bit more darker a bit more gruesome a bit more gothic but we will see that because it has titles like the witch and the mummy so I think those will be a little bit more gothic. But I think I will mainly listen to it because the audiobook is great. And I always need a great audiobook on the go. So I hope there wasn't too much noise within these updates. I sometimes kind of forget that the noise is there. So I hope I didn't just blab all through it. Thank you so much for watching the first weekly vlog of Vlogmas. I am right now reading... Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. So that will be the next weekly vlog. Already really enjoying this. So happy I'm reading another Jane Austen. And let me know if you've read any of the four books that I have discussed. I will give you my final thoughts of Shirley Jackson in another weekly vlog. I think I want to pick it back up because I haven't done weekly vlogs. I think for about three months just the occasional vlog. But not really a weekly vlog that I start on Monday and finish on Sunday. And I would like to pick that back up because those really are my favorite videos to make. I hope it's kind of going to work out and if you want to ride along with me on my reads for December and if you want to see the secret TBR Vlogmas videos then don't forget to subscribe and I hope you have a lovely lovely day or evening and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.